Oh no. There's the floor. Makes me cringe, but you gotta show him that I'm putting their pieces in anyway. That's not gonna work long term. <laughs> you see me? <laughs> Pulling the tire. <laughs> Do my surgery. So I'm pulling the CV axles. You just pull the bolts on the outside. To these, there's a 14 on the back side, 17 on the front. And then you take a pry bar and this bolt that holds the rear differential. I'm going to use that as a fulcrum. So I'm going to make this look really easy. At least that's the plan. You never know once the camera gets going. Uh, but you support the weight of the axle, pull it forward a little bit just so you got a little tension. And I'm just going to shove real hard on the pry bar and Pop goes a weasel. That was way too easy. There's a thousand other ways to do this that are ten times harder than that. What you're prying against is this little ring or little clip. So if it's sitting up, there's no way you're going to get that to come off. So try rotating it around until it's uh, agreeable and then pop it out. This axle here on the other side, there's not much access, but we don't really need it. You can take your drift tap that one through. Getting the muffler out of here is a little bit of a trick. Let me show you what I mean. There's a bracket that goes on the back side here that comes into this and then one that's on this that hangs by. So you have to take every bracket off of everything to make it slick and easy and it kind of is. So you come up to here, um, twist it around and that will get this bracket right here underneath of there. That's the secret right there. That's it. Get, get everything off of it and then rotate it so it sticks up here and then come down and then back and then the rest of it's pretty well not too bad just drop it down out the back so you come up like you're gonna jump up through it twist this up like a snorkel keep it angled back down bobs your uncle you're in so I like to put the muffler in first and then bring the pipe in. Pipe's pretty easy. So I already have my gasket on there. That's a bad idea. Don't do that. You just kind of swoop underneath like this. Rotate like we did with the other. Rotate back down. It's like a skateboard ramp. Up, down, up, down. Secure from the engine and then work your way out for best results. You can do whatever the heck you want, but uh, expect some frustration. So anyway, just like that, and then you just secure it. You do this one first, um, then you get these guys together, and then just work your way forward. It's kind of retarded, but these are not sold with the muffler. You have to reuse them or buy new ones. I didn't buy new ones because I thought they'd come with it. Cheap bastards. So here's how you take the differential out. Pull your nuts off. If you spin the bolt and hold the nut, you're less likely to drop it. it says nine out of 10 doctors. So most of the weight's held on that front bolt. This back bolt's gonna slide right out like nothing. Disconnect your hose from the back and then you lift up on it, pull out that front bolt. And now we're in business. So first thing you do is just pull it straight back until it bottoms out. Second thing you do is start turning it to the right. If you turn it to the right you can clear that shaft with the rotor. That way you don't have to nitpick it off of there. Of course you have to take off the brake caliper and that's what these little ear that's what these little ears for or the brake caliper. The main complaint is that when they drop on the gas it just make a bunch of noise and it wouldn't move or wouldn't motate unless it was in four wheel drive. So the way these work is there's a little collar, there's a little rubber bumper too, this one's shot, it was up in there. 
So this is a little rubber bump stop. It's really hard. It's not rubbery and cushioned anymore. And then this is just really rounded. You can see that it's not square on the edges as it should be. And when you put it with the interface here, they call this a boss. So when you put it to the boss, the boss says you're fired because it just spins. Just totally, totally worn out. So this was really red and dusty and just shot when I pulled it out of there. To get the boss off of the pinion, just pull out this nut here. This one's a 19 millimeter, and it'll come off. See, this is a pinion gear, and then that's the ring gear in the differential. You got support bearings and everything. So this uses a synthetic oil that does a phenomenal job. It does just awesome. And this crossbar here, it's also cracked. So we're going to need to do something with that. You can see where it's cracked and deformed on the other side. So that'll be welded before everything goes back together. By way of follow up, this spiral crack that went all the way up and around, I did weld that. It's not the prettiest weld I've ever done, but it should be plenty strong enough. If this breaks, then we'll go for a bear and we'll put a bracket underneath it here. Problem I have with putting a bar underneath of here is had I done that, it would have been a lot harder to work with that differential getting it in and out. Probably the better thing to do is to brace it this way. Do a brace here and a brace here. The problem with doing that is then you can't get your muffler out. Most slip joints that I've ever seen are spline things like this. They usually have a grease zerk or some way to keep them greased. And that way if anything's rubbing in and out as that's designed to do, uh, it doesn't wear it down. Also displaces water that can rust it. If you rust it and then rub on it, you get that red powder and just things wear out. So before putting this back together, we're just going to coat this with marine grade grease. This is for wheel bearings on boat trailers. So this is the most important part is just greasing the outside of this one and the inside of the boss. With that nut in there, it's easier to just grease this. To hold this in place, you just got a snap ring. No, it's not going anywhere. I'm going to put a little grease on the front end of this and then that little rubber bushing will have something to stick to. So this is the old worn out boss. This is the new one. You can barely see the teeth on this one and they're kind of sloped. These are really square and nice. So most of the wear happened here. So what I've done to prepare this is I've put grease all the way around the lip and around the outside lip where the little thing slides on. That way it doesn't get torn up. It just goes on. Grease the inside of these. I also grease the outer surface of this. Again with marine grade grease. You can see how this is sloped to help it to go in with the seal. We don't want to go in dry and mess the seal up. There we go. So that just goes in perfectly clean. Got our washer. You can tell that the splines were this side. Just start the threads by hand and then follow up with the socket and the impact. Sure, there's a specific torque for that, but we ain't got no radio. Once that's on, the next thing to go on, make sure you clean your hands first, is the brake rotor. All these little bolts. It's easier to put this on when it's off the vehicle than to try to work around it. Switch to hand tightening. I'll test a few, just see where they're at. If everything's good and tight, then I'm not going to mess with the good practices going on. Tightening in the triangle pattern, star pattern, and so everything's good. Don't have to worry. Don't go worry about that no more. To put this differential in, you go like this. Right hand goes through the back. Left hand takes your little unit and sticks it up in there. Put your button in. If you have a little grease on it, it helps to hold it. Turn the differential unit to the right until you can back it up beep, 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 into the bracket space. Once you're into the bracket space, you'll find that you can rotate that rotor and the boss together with your hand. The front bolt goes in first. Just hold it up in there with one hand. Right hand comes around this side. I'll raise it with my pinky a little bit, just kind of juggle, do what you got to do, right? Just slip your bolts in from the side. Once the front one's in, the back one goes super easy. Take your two washers, slap them on there. 
Now I make this look easy. Don't expect it to be too easy, but do expect it to be possible if you tip it to the right and back up into this space right here. Those are the two keys to doing this. That and having your bolts staged, at least one of them. What I do is I put the bolts up in the frame where that exhaust bracket is. I'll show you here in just a sec. So we're in place. We'll go back through and clean that rotor with some brake cleaner. It'll have some grease on it. So where I keep my bolts is I just lay them in this little bracket thing here for the exhaust. That's the hardest part of the whole job. Aside from the exhaust, that's a little bit of a bugger too, but hey, sweet. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. Looks good. Just one last time.
Life rules. Thank you so much for your support by watching, for being a part of the B-Mob, making it happen, Captain.